What's up, mob? Hey, so you guys saw, most of you guys saw the video I put up about Ryan Hughes. I heard some stuff from the ranch. I put the video up. It was out of context. Rhino asked me to take the video down, so I did. But he came on with me for about an hour. We had an amazing talk. The dude's awesome. He's not in a bad place. He had fun. But it's not the 90s. This stuff gets out on videos and knuckleheads like me post it. So there it is. Check out Complete Racing Solutions. Coach Rob is open for applications for his team. So hit him up if you want to be on the Coach Rob team. Epic Garage Designs for this badass studio. Uh, if you need flooring, slat wall, check out epicgaragedesigns.com. Uh, Ride Strapped, you guys know Strapped. Let's go Brandon Goggles, we the people. Check out Ride Strapped. And then Precision Transport. If you're hauling something, uh, trucking companies sometimes suck to deal with. Not Precision Transport. Check them out if you need to ship something. So, all right, guys, let's get into this Rhino interview. That's good. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. All right, guys, so I got the legend himself, Ryan Hughes. And if you guys saw my last video, clearly you understand he's he's not real pleased with me right now. So I, I told him, you know what? Come on, come on. Let me have it, and uh, we'll talk about it and see if we can uh, – Find some common ground. So what's up, Rhino? Uh, not much, man. I just got back from Loretta's and, oh, dude, I had so much fun there. Like, that was probably <laughs> one of the best Loretta's I've ever had. I mean, the I mean, because you go to the local tracks here and people know you, but you see, you know, they, they see us all the time. And then I live, you know, I live solo. I live off the grid and, you know, I like my own solitude. I like my healthy lifestyle and I like to have my own my own space. And so when I go there, I mean, I was blown away by how many fucking people like know me, like every five feet I went. So we were going, we went to the beer tent and man, just had a blast dancing with everybody. And then uh, I saw my friend, my daughter's friend that I've known shit since she was probably 13 named Morgan. And she was, uh, um, she has a great, great voice, great voice. And uh, saw her there and we we're joking around and having a little banter back and forth because of, uh, her and Riley because of how, how they interact. So, uh, but it was cool, man. It was, it was, it was a blast. Good to see everybody. And then, uh, when I got back, cause it's when you get into such a healthy lifestyle and you follow it, like I do, it kind of gets a little bit monotonous. So it's fun to kind of scratch that itch and be able to have fun with people you haven't seen in a couple of years or even people, <clears throat> excuse me, that you haven't met. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that was, that was really cool. And now back home and, back in some solitude and uh you know it's uh it's a good thing you know so uh happy man happy man so you weren't pleased with my video um let's 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 no I, I laugh dude i don't I'm not, i laugh at it because it's you know again it's, it's how people perceive stuff because you get one little video it can be you can't be here and people perceive it as this but it's actually we're having a blast so what? what you put on there i laugh at because you don't we never really hung out so you don't really know me. So I kind of got to laugh at that. You assuming a couple of things. Well, anybody can assume that if they they think they know me because I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. So, of course, I'm going to be a little bit outlandish. That's just me, man. You know, I live life. I'm juicy. I'm juicy. You know, so how <laughs> how can't how can't you be that? I'm not going to try to be what everybody else is. So I'm going to look a little outlandish. But, dude, I have fun wherever I go, man. It's amazing. Okay, and let me let me explain. First, I want to apologize for putting the video up there, but let Thank me you. let me tell you where I was coming from when I put the video up. And you know, we have <laughs> this industry has a has a way of ignoring people with issues, substance, yep. mental health, and all that stuff. And you yep. see signs of that in, in former riders. Like I said, to, like I told you before, <clears throat> I'm a fan. I, I I've watched you since you know way back in 1990. Like I said, we had we talked about World Mini. So to yep. see what perceived and like i like you said it was just a piece of the night but then hearing you know people blow things out of proportion i'm glad to talk to you and understand that you're doing good that there's not mental health issues there's not substance issues those were things that i was like okay well but 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 you you say that but let me let me say this when yeah. brian swink and some of these guys have their problems yeah. nobody said anything and i'm like no. i'm not going to be the guy that doesn't say anything but if i'm wrong which clearly i am i'm going to get on here and, and i don't want to i didn't i wasn't trying to just embarrass you i was just like wow like i hope he's okay and it was it yeah. was gnarly but i did no, take the again video. you know you 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 have all the right to say what you what you you know you perceive and uh yeah did i have some moonshine hell yeah 
it's, it's Loretta's. <laughs> <Duh. laughs> I mean, why go there and not have moonshine? You know what I mean? I mean, of course I'm going to. And so that, but <clears throat> that issue is something that I want to address also is because yes, do we struggle? 100%. Now it's up to the individual of how they take that. We can take it into depression and and sit with that, or we can take it into depression and start trying to cover it up with substances like like Swingster did and things like that, or even take it into sex or take it into porn or take it into whatever to try to cover up this uncomfortable feeling that we can't put a finger on because we've never had to deal with ourselves emotionally because we've had to be so single pointed and and actually selfish for so long to be the best. And so I see this despair in so many of us writers' eyes and um, because it's almost like we don't know what to do. And you kind of see people kind of chasing that old self a little bit because it makes them feel a little bit alive. But that's never going to fulfill you anymore because it's the energy that you're missing. It's not the sport. It's the energy that you have something to wake up for every morning, to motivate you, to drive you, to reward you, to challenge you, and sometimes to humble you. That's exciting. And so when you get into that person, that persona, how do you just turn the switch off, man? How do you turn the switch off? And yeah. that's where I feel our sport struggles because I feel our sport is so much more dynamic and expressive than any sport on earth. And also the thing I've looked at is how can you love yourself if you're willing to hurt yourself, willing to knowing that you could kill yourself, have been hurt and never even batted an eye, seen your friends maybe get paralyzed, killed, hurt, but you still keep doing the same sport. So when you're done with doing something you love, it's almost like I feel like we have to separate ourselves from ourselves, that we don't even know who we are and how to love ourselves because we've had to almost, if that makes sense. Does that make no, sense? It absolutely makes sense. And yeah, like, I, yeah. And you know? this industry, in addition to that, looks almost down on it. Like, hey, you know, you ride off into the sunset because you're Ryan Hughes and you were awesome. So you're, the rest of your life's going to be good. They don't see those dark days, that, that switch where it changes and you make that transformation. <clears throat> and yeah. it bothers me that people just shove it under the rug. And that's, like I said, that's where, that's where my thought process came in, in yeah. doing that. So. Yeah. No. And again, you have all the right to say that. And that's something that I've been talking to people, you know, even Dungy and things like that, that none of these guys have problems, but everybody is kind of still kind of, what do I do? <laughs> right. Because how, once you're on the peak of the mountain, any direction you go, man, is down. Yeah. You can't, you can't go left. You can't go anywhere except stay still. So, but once you can't stay still, you got to go down. And that valley is always much deeper than that peak is high. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know? absolutely. And I, and I look at motocrossers in the same psychology of like a child actor, they peak early mm -hmm. and there's just yep. nowhere to go. Like you're constantly chasing and recreating and you'll mm -hmm. never find, like, I have no idea what it feels like to stand in on a supercross podium. Like you do, you're never going to get that again. And I don't know. <laughs> and that's gotta be sure. intoxicating, right? Like there's some sure. sort of physiological yeah. change that has to happen in your brain at that point. Like I, I don't know how to say it's just easy to walk away. No matter, even if you have money, I don't think that necessarily no. is a deciding. I factor. feel, I, I feel almost the higher you were and the better you are, the almost harder it is to let it go. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it's just like someone rich, you know, I think someone that the more money you have and the more shit you have when you die, I think it's harder to die. It's more fearful. Right. Yeah. I would think that because you're letting so much go, but if you have nothing, you're like, all right, peace. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so well, yeah. I'm out of here. I got fear, fear anyway. the man has nothing to lose. So yeah, yeah that's... right. Yeah, exactly. So I, I feel, feel that that is definitely you know something <clears throat> that's difficult to kind of understand when you're up there, and then now that money's not coming, that that magazine's not there. You know, you can walk through the pits and people kind of walk by you. Yeah. Or you're somewhere and someone asks for somebody else's autograph right next to you, and you're like wait a minute, I'm more popular than him. You know what I mean? So this stuff starts happening and, but you have to accept that because like me, I've been hurt so much in this last 10 years and uh, healed myself um, 100% and never got hooked on anything and just did my routine all the time. And that's why I feel I healed so much, but I have to be very smart now and not go back and try to be that guy. Right. Yeah. Because and so not doing that, I have to let go of motocross completely and mountain biking and, and actually being competitive. I have to let it go. And that is very difficult. But 
then it started to kind of make me more more comfortable. I didn't have this fictitious pressure on me or this fictitious or this kind of this little stress of fear that always what riding motocross does to you, right? Yeah. That left. So it allowed me to be a lot more at ease. But then life became a little bit boring. And okay, then you know, here comes that chase. Okay, well, I got to do something. <clears throat> but I had to learn how to just be, just to be like to enjoy being alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because you come to a point where there's nothing else, there's nowhere else to go. Like I, I'm sitting here going, what can thrill me? Since I've done, and you know me, I've done everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've looked under every, I've looked under every day in Morocco for some fun. Okay. But when you've done that, then you come to a point where you're just you're stuck in your tracks. Because you know what the the end result of everything that you do. Oh, okay, yeah, man. Maybe I'll go hang out with my buddies and have a little party. Yeah, but the next day you're gonna feel like shit. Right? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go get a I'm gonna go hang out with a chick and maybe get some. Well, yeah, tomorrow you're gonna still you're gonna feel a little bit lonely. Right? Yeah. You know, oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get a bunch of money and go work hard. Okay, but now what? So everything has that. Or <clears throat> I'm gonna get back on my bicycle and be competitive. Yeah, but now look at all the pain you're going to have to go through. So it stuck stuck me in my tracks, and I'm like, "Fuck, man! I just got to really start enjoying just being alive. I really do." And so I've really been focusing on just trying to just let that feeling come into me, and it's it's subtly there, you know. And, so he put some moonshine in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like I said, once again, I apologize, but like. Like I said, I don't want to just ignore it when you see stuff like that, especially with people and the way this industry shoves it under the rug. I wanted to, and I wasn't trying to just blast you. I just I was like, man, yeah. that, that did what I saw looked pretty bad. But I mean, in context, it wasn't that bad. It's at a bar with 21 and older. Yeah, It was really hot. I, I get it. I get it. And I apologize to you for that. But I'm just glad you're good, man. And that's genuinely yeah. what I, I honestly was more concerned. I wasn't just looking to bury you or anything like that. Yeah. And I don't want man, to do hey. anything. Am I am I going to lie that I haven't had my struggles? Am I going to lie that I haven't sat out here in almost panic of being like alone, like sitting out here and going, okay, I'm completely alone. Not a single person knows where I'm at. Not a single person is probably thinking about me. Not a single person is getting in touch with me. And if I died, a single person wouldn't even know if I died. Whoa. And it was so liberating. But it was so kind of because, again, I, I was 24 years with the marriage and family and this and that. And then this, this life just kind of put me out here doing this off grid and kind of being solo. And so I've had to deal with a lot of stuff and then breaking my neck twice in one year and healing myself, <laughs> being paralyzed four Dude. times in the last 10 years. Just just FYI, four times being the fact that you were on an airplane after doing that and seeing your neck. Oh my God, man. Like, I don't even know yeah, the how day, the day before that I was internally decapitated. Yeah. I, yeah. It, so I don't know. I'll probably find the video, but your head was off to the side. <laughs> it, and then the fact that you flew home and walked out of the airport, I oh. was just like, dear God, dude. But see, there's a, there's, there's an ability that people have to be able to have such a strong mind that they can almost fool themselves. Because when there, I wasn't scared one time, was I sad one time? Did I cry one time at the hospital? But fuck you, man. Right when I got off that airplane, I cried like a baby, like for 20 minutes. I could not stop crying because now it was the, the reality set in of what I just went through. And dude, I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. It was like, I mean, it was, it was like, it was pro pretty profound, you know, of, 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 of a very internal growth that you know you get it's like going through something like that by yourself you gain such trust in yourself that you just don't even actually need to follow anybody or read anything anymore your instinct and your intuition has become has become profound right that's but that's, terri that's that's terrifying for me to hear you say that that about the alone because i've had eight friends that i grew up riding with and racing with who've ended their lives yeah <clears throat> Yeah. And and when I hear you say stuff like that, and the guys that usually say they're okay are the ones where I don't worry about and then all of a sudden they get a phone call. So yeah, yeah that shit that shit's alarming. And and I think it's okay to talk about that stuff. I've had yeah, my own I issues. And you, and have you to. add you add into the mix. So you you grow up, you're a star. It, it it's <clears> hard <throat> to grow up. Listen, you're walking at 15 years old and everybody's just <clears throat> like rhino, rhino. 
that messes with you when you get older and you're just like, I, you remember Mike bias? Uh, he was a arena cross guy. He was awesome, but he's like, okay. dude, it's so hard to go from a top pro to employee number 643. And it just, yeah. It, it's yeah. like he's all I was motherfucking Mike Bias and now I'm number 643 and he's had his own and everybody goes through that whether you were yeah. a local pro or a high pro and like you said the higher you are the bigger the fall um, well yeah. I think every I think people go through that even after retiring from a business I think mom and dads go through that after their kids leave they do you know it, it, it's not it's not just I think it's no you know it is everybody is feeling this right now because nobody's feeling connected to anybody because they're so far away from their true self because they're so focused on what we're doing right now is this social media and these cameras and exterior input everywhere that you're not even understanding your own, your own senses. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. And so when there's so much separation from yourself, you're going to feel lonely, even if you have a family with you. So for me, that is where you're closing the gap now where there isn't that anymore. You know, this little feeling of loneliness comes up and now I'm a master of it. I go, come on. And then I, what I do is I just, I just feel myself walking or I feel myself brush my teeth or that and it's gone. What I do, I change, I change the thought because I don't have, you don't have control of your thoughts because if you have control of your thoughts, you can tell me what your next thought is impossible. So your thoughts think you, so you have to learn how to master those. Right. And you well, don't well, have yeah, to master yeah. so your emotions. So right? if your your thoughts are essentially a recreation of your past, so you're going in a loop unless yeah. you can change that path. Yeah, um, unless you can see that path is just a story. Yeah. Because again, I've had, so then loneliness. I sat there with loneliness. I'm like, okay, I feel lonely. All right, I'm going to find out why. And I started going through all these things. Okay, this. And then I started dissecting this. Nope. Okay, oh, that. I started dissecting that. Nope. Oh, it's because I don't have a woman in my life. So I started dissecting what a woman in my life would be and all the shit that comes with it. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and and so I started going through all this stuff and I came to the bottom. I couldn't find anything. So I said, well, that's it's then it's fictitious. So maybe it's something that is passed in my genetic line from my heritage, my line, or it's something maybe in humanity because of, you know, our past of living in cages or, or back in the 1500s, 1600s in these places that you only can imagine their living conditions. You know what I mean? Because things get stuck in us, in us humans, or we wouldn't keep acting the same ways. I well, don't believe. I, or, and I think you know? part of, part of that is, so back in the 1800s, they didn't have time to be depressed. They were every day you did <laughs> yeah. what you had to do to live to the next day. But now we have so many things so easy that it it's it's yeah it's like idle hands of, you know and it's just it yeah so you, it, you're getting this whole different mindset yeah so in the 1800s they never had anything to compare to yeah to be jealous to be jealous yeah. you know here you turn on a phone you have you could compare your fucking toenails you know what i mean i mean dude it that that's the problem with these kids now is there's so much comparison and judgment that they don't even know how they truly feel or think themselves. So that's why it's so important, dude, to get out of society, get out of that five, get five G, that that smart everything, all this stuff that's in there. Because when I go into town now, I feel anxious because here there isn't, there's none of that. You know? Yeah, and, and, and I have to say, dude. what it's I so fucking healing. It's so healing, and I wish I could bring people out here and show them my routine and show them my ways of, 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 of gaining this, this energy and, and share it with these riders and people in my sport, man, that that's what my next, I want my next path to be the technique. There's nothing else to do, man. It's mastered, right? The, the, the bikes they're how much better can you fucking get them? The training, how much fitter can everybody get? The mind is next, what everybody has to understand. And then also your lifestyle, because everybody rides and trains for maybe three, four, three, four hours a day. If that, but what about the other 20? What are you listening to? What are you, what are you, what are you eating? What are you watching? Who are you hanging out with? You know, because you, you're a product of your environment. So anything that you watch here, eat, do you start becoming. And no wonder little Johnny's career isn't because he's a jack off over here in the 20 hours. Right. Or the people that are retiring to show them how to have a routine that keeps them feeling good, keeps them feeling energetic, keeps them feeling not so uh, feel full of pain. So now they're not chasing these things to fill those voids, right? Yep. Do you that's, do you look do you do. do you look back on your career and wonder 
if you didn't maximize, like, obviously you trained hard, nobody ever questions your fitness, but yeah, like you said, the other 20 hours of the day, did you maximize it? Or is that something you developed later on? Um, yeah, I, I maximized it. I was, I was, you know, I was a good kid. I never drank and did that. Yes. Of course, here and there, here and there and have some fun, uh, later in the career. Of course, when I got older, I had some more fun. Um, and, uh, but I was very, I was very serious there. Um, <clears throat> Never went out to parties, never did that. Just every once in a while, go to go to the river and those guys. I mean, everybody else partied kind of more than me um, back then. But yeah, we had a fucking good time. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> That's that era, man, Dude. that era. We had, we had the best era ever because it was serious. We were all friends, but that's when it was starting to get really popular. Right? Well, yeah. And, and, and so, like and so said, we all got real popular. We all got real popular uh, together and, you know, because we all hung out together. Nowadays, it's different. Well, and you could do things that were fun and dumbasses like me didn't put a video up of it the next day. So oh, it, yeah. like, it was a little more freeing. And like I said, I oh, yeah. feel bad that I contribute to that. But like I said, I just want to make sure you're good. And yeah, dude, I'm, but yeah, I'm I apologize solid, for that uh, once again, and it's down <laughs> and I'm glad you're okay. And that's all I really, like, I just really wanted to make sure you're good, dude. So yeah, no, no. And again, every, I'm sure everybody, you know, I've heard, I've heard, it's not the first person that's ever, that's ever questioned it because again, what have I done? I've gone away from what the norm is. Yes. But how is my thinking though? My think is always away from the norm. Look at my technique. Look at the way I ate before everybody ate. Look at the way I trained before everybody trained. Look at how I do yoga before everybody did yoga. Look at ice bath saunas before that. You know, it's just, I'm, I'm, I think differently. I'm not boxed in because I don't follow any theology or any way of thinking you know you're not going to box me into saying you need to be like this think like this and act like this no fuck you <laughs> come <laughs> well, on man i'm sure Give you me. got that from me too like our call before this i'm like i don't yeah. I, i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do and yeah. I, I try to be respectful and, but at the same time i'm me so yeah and, and i envy you too because there's things that i don't like in the sport that i wish i could just blast to the fucking nitty-gritty you know yeah. and boy would i I'm in the sport. Dude, here's the thing. I uh, I was in the sport and I said, fuck it. I'm done with this yeah. bullshit. Uh, and I gave up a really lucrative job at Western Power Sports to be able yeah. to say what I want. I make less money, but I say what I want. And I got some other stuff cooking. But yeah, I did the same yeah. thing. But I, I, I don't think I didn't sacrifice to do that. I chose to do that. No, no, no. But see that, that you, you know, you, that's on, you, 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 I honor that. You know what I mean? Because what you're doing is you're doing what you love. I do. And if you do what you if you do what you love, you never fail, but you also never succeed, even though you can make a lot of money. But you're just you're doing what you love because it's fun. You know what I mean? And that is somebody that I respect because most people are doing what they don't like to do just to keep a job, keep a paycheck, hold their mouth, keep their persona. So that's why people have problems with me and my sports, because I don't have sponsors. Now, I make sure of it because I'm not going to hold my tongue. I'm not going to look a certain way or am I going to do something that somebody wants me to do just so I can have a paycheck so I can have a job or I protect some persona that people think I am. No, I'm Ryan Hughes, man. And that's it done. Yeah. But like I said, well, and that's, and that's <laughs> why I respect you. And that's why I, when you reached out, we're mad. I was like, Oh shit, I better make this right. Cause I, I, I like this guy. I respect <laughs> this guy. I don't want to be on the bad. I don't want to be on the bad side. Not because I'm afraid. I just, I, I respect you, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is that there's always there's always going to be uh, confusion in the sport or in this world, because, you know, how are you going to figure out something, you know, that, you know, this this world is, you know, it's, it's un unpredictable. Yeah. Right. You know, nothing is going to be predictable in this in this world. So there's always going to be confusion and think people seeing things the wrong way. But I know from my past not to handle things the way I have in the past and to handle things with grace. You know, because if you handle things with grace, then both sides win. They should. Absolutely. You know, well, and you come out of there being friends. You come out of there even maybe being better friends because now there's more respect. Yeah. That's that's how I do it, man. I appreciate I that. It. Like I said, it's friends of mine. They know exactly where they stand with me because I let them know, and and yeah. and I can take it when I, you know. And that's why I said, like, come on, let me have it. Like, if I if I screwed up, hit me, which is good, you know. And I, like I say, I am definitely not perfect. If you show me a perfect person, I'll show you a liar. So, <laughs> yeah, but being perfect is boring, dude. So boring. Yeah, oh, it's so yeah, stupid. Yeah. Nobody wants to be perfect. Yeah. But at the same I, time, I actually, I actually, tr I actually try to be imper un imperfect, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Isn't that yeah. And that ruffles that ruffles people's feathers? 
And then, and then if you ruffle people's feathers, as you know, what do they do? They look. And if they look, you're, and if they look, you're seen, right? Yeah. And if I you're would... seen, if you're seen, then you can you can talk to them or 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 get engaged with them or bring them to your way, right? Yeah. So yeah, I like I just treat people the way that I want to be treated, and uh, you know, that I accept people with their flaws because clearly I'm flawed too. So it is what it is. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. can we talk a little bit about your uh, relationship for Forkner? Because I am so pumped that you're working with Forkner. This poor kid has been through hell. And I've been <laughs> just hoping, man, it's just it, he he's yep. one of the biggest talents that I've ever seen. And he just hasn't. I mean, remember, think about where he was yeah. battling Sexton for a title. And it, he had he had Sexton covered. And then he hurts his knee. Yeah. And now look where they are. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's what can happen in the sport with just a few injuries because a lot of, you know, Few injuries can be big injuries that take a long time to heal, right? And that's what's happened. He hasn't had just little nicks and a pinky and shit like that. I mean, there've been some pretty massive injuries, so it's taken a long time to heal. And nowadays, they don't rush to get back into racing like we did in our day. It's like, hey, I'm healed. Okay, uh, get the flight. We're going to we're going to Southwick. <laughs> You've ridden like three days, you know, <laughs> you know. But now now it's like, hey, you get to ride three months or even miss a series. So it's a little why, different. But why is it, why is it that they wait? I just, I just think it's more, I think it's, you know, well, I think it's safer. I really I agree. Do. I agree. You with you. I, mean? I, just... I, I think it's safer. You know, it should be up to the rider, but it, it should be, you know, up to the whole team and just to be on the safe side. It's, Cause again, okay. You have one injury, you come back early, you injured again or get a bigger injury. Now you're done for, for your, your career or just wait three, few more months. Uh, hold on. What the hell is calling me? How do I end? No, hold no. Right. I don't know what's going on. Someone's someone's calling me, and I don't I, I don't I don't want to hang up on this because you you hit the wrong number. So if yeah, I did just let it beep, it's fine. Or... Just let okay. it beep. It'll go away in a second. Yeah. Right. So, anyways, uh, I think it's a little bit safer, so it could it could carry on with someone's uh, career. So, anyways, how myself and Austin met? We're at Paula, sitting right next to each other, and I reached my hand out. I'm like, hey, I'm Rhino, and he's like, I'm Austin, and we both go, we know, and so. <clears throat> And I started talking to him and I was like, Hey man, I go, give me 20 minutes and I'll change your fucking career. And he looked at me and I said, yeah. And I just started explaining a few things and we exchanged numbers. He called, he called me and we made a time to go to a Noah Viney's track, a little turn track. And he's dude, it's like 20 seconds, you know, <laughs> and he gets there and he gets there and I see his head drop just going, what the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> you know? And I said, Hey, come on. So we did some drills for about 20 minutes. And he came over and he goes, man, he goes, I've learned more in 20 minutes with you than I have with someone in two years. Because I told him, I goes, exactly. Because everybody's watering, the, everybody's watering the leaves. How fast are you? How fit are you? What's your heart rate? I'm watering the roots. How you ride this motorcycle. What's your approach on this motorcycle is. Where you are mentally on this motorcycle. That's what I'm focused on and focused on only. I will never tell you to go faster one bit. Because you can go faster, you just don't know how to go faster. I'm here to teach you how to go faster so then that your ability goes up. But we have to fix some things so you become more efficient. You become more um, at ease. You don't override the bike. And I'm going to teach you better than the way I did it because I see a lot of myself in you. And we overdo everything. If someone says go fast, we go even faster. If someone says slow down, we say for what? You know? So... And so this is what I've been doing is chipping on his technique and chipping out a little bit of this, this mentality that we kind of have adopted, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and, uh, but we get along really well, really, really well, man. You know, we talk really well. When I talk, he looks in my eyes, he can have the bike started. When I come over, he turns it off. And so, you know, we just work on all these drills and I, I feel this next few races are going to be good, but I'm looking at the last three MWW, whatever those things are. <laughs> WW, the SMX. WWF. Super, I call it super duper cross. <laughs> yeah, the WWF cross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That thing. I feel that that can be something good for him because he's starting to have a lot more fun with it right now. Because that's what I'm trying to do is bring fun in it with him. I say, let's stop starting to be so serious, man. Let's stop being so serious. Why did you start doing this? Because it was fun? Yeah. Where did it go? So let's try to concentrate on the track. You know, when you come into a corner and you start to slide it a little bit sideways and then you hit that hook and right when that hook comes up, the bike points out and you get your foot on, it, you get that next gear and it, it tracks down and you, or you come in that next corner and there's a teeny little rut there and you get that front wheel to stick there and it feels so good. I go, that's what we want to concentrate. Cause that feels fun. 
right? When you downside that thing perfectly and you get that next thing and, and kind of wheel tap that, I go, that's what feels fun. And when you're doing that, you're going fast, right? Yeah. And when you're having fun, when you're having fun, you're relaxed. And that's what we need. We need relaxation out of you because the sport has changed. In our day, we could override the bikes because they allowed it. And then it happened. It kept going through kind of Carmichael Stewart. But now the bikes have gotten so good that you have to ride the motorcycle. So if you watch Jet, there is never a start, stop, or acceleration ever in this program. You don't see it because it's so smooth. And if you don't start and stop, well, then you can go a little bit slower. If you don't ever lose traction, you can try a little bit less. Right. Absolutely. Plain and, simple. Plain and simple. That's what he's doing. Nothing else. He's not a higher gear. He's not doing any obstacles different. He is just riding the track in so much more of a present focused, like delicate way that he's taking out all these mistakes that would take up two seconds. Every start, stop, lack of traction. Think about it in, in on a lap. What you hit on there is huge too. the <laughs> the fun part. So you're relaxed. Your cardio is so much better if you can take stress out of the equation or a little bit of stress and add fun. Your performance yeah. goes up. And you look at Jet, that dude looks like he's having fun. Yes, of course he's having fun. Have you ever seen someone that's stressed with, with arms just loose? No, they're all tight. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? Yep. So that's going to happen on the motorcycle. Have you ever seen what happens when you stress? You're what happens to your breathing? It becomes starts to become shallow. So that's happening on the motorcycle. You get what I'm saying? But when you're having fun, because all the best races you've ever had, you had fun at. And so that's what I'm trying to get into the sport a little bit more. Because when I got done, I'm like, fuck, did I even have fun? I mean, I, I love the the work ethic. That was what I was addicted to. But I don't know if I had the fun of the thrill, you know, like a Jeremy did or something. He had some fun. He had he more fun in it, I think. And yeah. and I was. I was the workhorse and, you know, because again, like, just like you said, I think, yeah, Sexton and yeah, how Sexton went up. I was beating Jeremy day in, day out, day in, day out in the nineties, you know, Dude, all at, the way up. At the National, amateur nationals that I went to, yeah. you owned him. <laughs> yeah. And then at, at my first national, I got fifth, he got 20th, you know, and when he kept on and then the first, uh, supercross, uh, you know, in supercrosses, we were pretty good in nineteen nineties, and then ninety one, I almost won. Uh, I almost won uh, the first one against Swinkster at Orlando. He beat me by. I came from dead last. He beat like me a by knobby. The, the the nipple on the knobby. <laughs> you know, dude. I remember seeing and that picture I, in Cycle News. So yeah, and then I broke my wrist, and we went to Tokyo Dome. I broke my wrist, and then I never had the same movement. My this my whole career, my wrist has moved this much. Ooh. That's it. That's all I can move it up. So my, my style changed so much that it always allowed me to be off balance. And then from that point is where myself and Jeremy just did this big switch. He went to be the greatest of all time. And I won a few supercrosses and kept getting and had injury after injury after injury. So that's what I see in Austin, kind of like you're saying with Sexton. is like there's this point where I started getting injured and Jeremy just shot through the roof. But I feel I had that same speed as him or I wouldn't have been as good as him up to that point. That makes sense. Absolutely. And then that 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 wrist and it always let it always led me off to the right hand side of the motorcycle. Now, if you're unbalanced and you hit something, well, then you magnify everything that's happening. That's why Jet and Sexton are so good is because they're so balanced. The why Cincerello and Anderson will never keep up with them is because they're so unbalanced. They're always side to side counterbalancing, fixing stuff. And Sexton and Jet are so center pointed that they're always initiating what they're doing. And these other guys are always reacting to what already happened. Does that make sense? Question. Yeah. Uh, so Casey Cochran, I'm sure you saw him at the ranch. And this kid is really <laughs> coming to his own. You know, I've taken I I took some, some crazy shits about I hear some crazy shit about on. them people, boy. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, let's hear it. Uh, I took some heat. No, I, know, I, know. I took. I'm not. I'm, some... making, I'm not. I'm not going to make up shit, but boy. I, well, I just if it, if, you say whatever you want. Like, but I took heat for saying they shouldn't put him out there with a dislocated shoulder because he's already proved. He already proved he's won futures. No. He's won outdoors. You're going to tell me one Loretta's title is worth risking because shoulder injuries are no joke, and they're going to put him right back out there, and it might work out, and he might be fine. But I just wouldn't have risked that. Yeah, I, thought, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't think putting a rider back out there with a dislocated shoulder is depending on what level of race it is and where that race is at in the series. 
and right. where you are in the point standings. Okay. So an intermediate class at Loretta's, when this guy's already won the futures, which he shouldn't even be an intermediate, you know what I mean? That, yeah. that, 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 that's what should be talked about to Husqvarna. Look, dude, you won a futures race and you're putting him in, in, in intermediate. Why don't you, why don't you prove how fast he is and put him in the pro? Okay. I, I made, I made, I, I made that argument too. So okay. that's what should be talked about, but putting him back in the race. No, I don't, I don't, I don't disagree. I, I don't, I don't agree with them doing that. Now, if it was a national race or supercross, okay. If you were 10th in points, no. If you were battling for the lead, 100 fucking percent. And if you didn't, I would ask you why. Correct. And as a pro, you know? <laughs> with a full, as a pro with a fully developed body, you're taking a different risk than a kid who's still growing. And that's where I'm yeah. like, oh, man, you can cause some real problems during growing phase. Yeah. So I don't think any why, 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 why should you get a bunch of slack for that? That's just your opinion. You know what I mean? Because like, everyone, wouldn't, everyone wouldn't, gets slack for everything. You know how it is, yeah. dude. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I unleashed I quite a bit of it on you. I can't, I, even, I, like I, said, I can't even have fun without get, getting slack and acting. Oh, like jackass is posting the like, video. <laughs> it's not the 90s anymore, dude. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. <laughs> so I could, yeah. I could give two shits what people think, but I had a blast, man. And everybody know I had knew I had a blast because they had a blast with me. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I said, I, I wish. But yeah. yeah, with um with that whole thing, you know, I think Casey. I think he'll be good. I, I think that he needs to sharpen up his technique a lot. I think it will it will bite him sooner or later. Not you know just because of the way he's working. He bends at the knees a lot, and that will not work at Supercross um, at that high level. You know. Yeah. You know, and that's why you see you see Hampshire all over the place. You know, and making a lot of mistakes because he bends at the knees. And you bend at the knees, you go into your arms. If you go into your arms, well, you got to push back. When you go bend at your knees and go into the bike, well, now you're more into the bike. And whatever the bike does, you're being affected by it. You see Jet and Sexton's legs very straight. So when they they initiate everything at the hips, because if I initiate everything at the hips, that's always going to put my body in the strongest, most stable, most coordinated, most efficient position. But if I bend at my knees first, that's actually going to almost put me in the weakest position because now I'm collapsed into my knees instead of being collapsed almost into my hips. Just like you're doing a squat, you'd never squat and bend at your knees first. You'd never sit on your toilet and bend at your knees first. You always move at your hips first, right? So that's what you're seeing with Sexton and and Jet is that is that every time they jump, hips out. Every time they come in the corner, hips out. Every time they land from a jump, hips out. Every time they accelerate, hips out. So they're in, in, initiating that because if I initiate that, I bring my lower body to the rear end of the motorcycle for traction. I bring my upper body to the forward to the direction the motorcycle's going. So I'm initiating it with my core and not having to pull up with my arms. Right. And so that's why you see their arms so loose. And that is one of the biggest things in motocross to go fast is you have to have a flow, but you can't have a flow if you have tight arms, but you can't have loose arms unless you have the rest of the body. It perfect. Yeah. Spot Duh. on. Duh. Did, you, <laughs> did you see anyone? So you saw all the guys at the ranch last year, obviously Deegan was the standout and he's yep. proving he's the man. Do you see anyone? Yep. Who, who do you think? Who's, Give me, give me a couple of guys you think are going to be standout pros that you saw at the ranch this year. I, I saw Daxton. I think Daxton will be good. You know, I think, I think he'll be good. Uh, that Juju guy, if he can, <clears throat> if he can bring his consistency in a little bit, he'll be good. And he's working with Davey Millsap, so I think that's good. Uh, I think no, I know Noah has the ability. He's just very young in his kind of maturity, and some people just grow late, man. You can't, you know. I got. I got four trees here that are the same and one just ain't growing. I can't rush it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I no. It, man, I still give it the same fertilizer and I still give it the same water and actually I give it a little bit more support because I know someday it will. And so I feel he'll will. Parker Ross, I feel is another one. Um, yeah. You're probably going to laugh. Yeah. Aiden, Aiden Kiefer. So the reason I say Aiden Kiefer is because I yeah. look at where he's come in the last couple of years. These guys that have been on top for a long time, they can't make leaps and bounds. But when I see a kid hit this age and start developing and all of a sudden become a, a guy in the pack, I go, okay. Because that's kind of how yeah. Dungy was. They're not burned out. They're they're ready to yeah. actually hit their stride when they turn pro. Yeah, I think for me, I, I, I still like to be patient. You know, hey, get to the pro class. Let's see you ride a couple pro classes. Let me see you ride some futures. You know, yeah, you're good. You've made some progression. That's cool. You know, but a lot of people have. So let's not get excited. Let's 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 be interested, but you know, 
we'll, we'll see. Now, he's a great rider. I like his, his technique has changed a lot over the years. I've seen it. You know, I've seen it change a ton. He used to be a big butt tucker and kind of rounder. And so then he's really rotated his hips out and got that back straight. And that's and I think that's where you've seen this big click in him is because now his technique, his technique can handle his speed. You know what I mean? Yep. And his technique now is clean enough to handle even more speed. And you're seeing it. And then what, what, what does more speed do? Uh, creates more confidence. More confidence creates more speed. So, yeah. You're seeing that you're seeing this thing. So again, it starts from the first seat and the first seat is how you ride this motorcycle. That's where all speed comes from is, is your technique, right? You yeah. know, skill before will skill before will. We'll go 100%. much farther. hundred <laughs> percent brother. All right. Well, we kind of just did this impromptu. I don't want to keep you all night. Yeah, I, no problem. I apologize for posting the video. I'm glad it was taken out of context and you're in a good place. No, no problems. None of those questions. All the questions I asked, the answer is a, sol a solid no, right? <laughs> uh, we just had, we just talked for about an hour, dude. I, I think you could tell if there's some little screw. Uh, yes. In my yes. Head. No, you're, or, you're rock solid. Or if I would flur, if I was slurring my words or, you know what I mean? If I was big puffy and bloated and shit like that. Nah, bro. Dude, I'm, I'm healthy, man. Good. I'm well, and, Hey, you know what though? If somebody's out there and you're struggling or you're having Yo, it, dude, reach please, out. Please. You're yes, not alone. Reach out Everybody to me, struggles. Reach out to, reach out to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, dude. I'll, I'll, I will talk to anybody that is in a place that uh, uh, they don't know a direction out, you know? Yeah. And I I'm had the, some, I'm the same as everybody, bud. I had some depression yeah. issues. Have you ever mm -hmm. heard of uh, CT, what is it called? No, uh, TMS therapy, transcranial magnetic stimulation. I did that. It was amazing, dude. Really? Yes. So what happens is all these years of hitting our heads, it yeah. rewires your brain. It's like a river when it runs yeah. dry and it cuts a different direction. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I have. Is it they put things on your head? It's like, where did it's you like, do that? I did. There's a clinic here in Las Vegas that I did it for. I did a video, uh -huh. documented it, but you have yeah, to go every day for like 30 like minutes. That. Yeah. I think I might've done something. I hook it up to a computer, right? Yeah. And they yeah, but it, they can make your fingers move and stuff through your head. <laughs> Maybe maybe mine wasn't as maybe mine wasn't as uh as in depth as yours. I don't know. They could hit I'd a button. Like, hey. They could hit I'd a button like, hey, and make hey. a different finger move. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, I'm like, hey, uh, can you just like make a button, and make my hand move, so I can just like <laughs> not have to do anything, act like someone uh -oh. else is doing it. <laughs> yeah, but no, there's there's lots of therapies. You don't have to just struggle. Reach out, talk yeah. to somebody, yeah, and, and and figure out what's going on. And if you if therapy or TMS or maybe just a little yoga with Rhino, who knows? So yeah, because the thing is. The more you're doing, the more you're doing to try to cover something up is not going to work because if it hasn't worked, then you got to look at it, you know, the so 16 beers a day and you still wake up depressed. Well, there's a reason. So this is another thing that I want to uh, look at is that most people say, and I'm sure you've said it too. If I didn't have my motorcycle, I'd be a miserable man. All right. So I had to, I had to put my motorcycle away and do this. And I found out I was a little bit of a miserable man. So anybody that's saying that is telling you that they're actually a miserable man because, yeah, you go ride this motorcycle, this bicycle, go do this. But then what then you come back to that miserable person. So this is just little bits of like it's like a shot of a shot of whiskey or something. You know what I mean? And so you're using these things are like little little bumps of drugs to keep you out of that miserable person that you actually are. You know, that that made me stop in my tracks. I'm like, holy shit then yeah, then I'm miserable. So I had to go, I had to kind of start going through that whole process too. And so there's a lot of people that could be doing great things, but still be in this place also, you know? Awesome. Because yeah, how dude. many, how many, how many, how many people that were so successful like you killed themselves? I mean, dude. Well, just right? look at the people in our industry. And like I said, that's why I won't apologize for asking the questions and checking on someone Probably shouldn't have done it the way I did it with you, but I, <laughs> yeah, but maybe, I still, I'm, maybe, maybe but I'm still, my number. <laughs> yeah. maybe call you. It doesn't film post a yeah. video. Hey bro. Hey, hey bro. You cool? <laughs> hey, I learn every day, man. And I learned that yeah. one today. So, you know, it is what it is, but yeah, cool. but awesome. Okay. Rhino, you have a awesome, good night. Dude. Thanks yeah, man. Hey, keep, and, uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing, man. You bring, you bring light to the sport. You bring, uh, you know, you speak a different, uh, you're speaking a different thing than everybody trying to be Mr. Uh, cookie cutter. So we need that. You know, we need that. We need we need some controversy. I and mean, that's why they have TMZ. Half the shit on TMZ is probably fake anyways, you know? Yeah. And and blown out and blown out of proportion. So kinda hey, is what it is. News is news, baby. Well, and I'm <laughs> dude, I don't do fake stuff. 
but I don't yeah, cover no, no, it I up don't. either. And like but I said, I, if I, I get I'm it saying, wrong, I'm going to have you on just like I'm having you on right now to clear it up. Yeah. So, yeah. But what I'm saying is uh, like that side of it, of, yes, of yes. the people, you know, and their mistakes or the people that are screwing people or, you know, this side of it. You can't fix shit unless you figure out what's wrong first. Yeah. Unless it's pointed out. So you got it. All right, cool. brother. Have a good All night right now. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you. Ciao.